Good evening. Today is March 20th, 2017, and welcome back to Veterans Voices. I'm Nathan Johnson, the Contra Costa County Veteran Service Officer, and I'm joined again by my co-host, Gold Star Father, and CalVet Link, a very important role, Mr. Kevin Graves. Hey, Nathan. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. Good, good. good to see you. Thanks for joining us for the next hour. Our discussion will be led by your participation. If you, had, if you had the opportunity to speak directly to the Department of Veteran Affairs Secretary, David Shulkin, what would you say? Tonight, we want to hear your thoughts around the VA. Our show is called Dear Mr. Secretary, and we're standing by for your calls, emails, and messages. You also have the option of remaining anonymous by clicking live chat on our website. Our phone number is 925 313-1170, and we're taking your questions and comments right now. So in case you didn't understand that correctly, we need your participation in tonight's show, because tonight's show is all about your thoughts, your opinions, your voice on what the current administration should be doing in regards to veterans' benefits. There's power in sharing your voice. The elected officials and organizations influencing policy need to hear what's important to you. We will be joined by veteran policy influencers later in the show who will offer suggestions for how to best get your opinion heard. While your calls and messages are coming in, the phones are open now, call us now. And while they're coming in, we want to bring attention to volunteers at the Morgan Territory mudslide, landslide, excuse me. And recently this event took place. Maybe some of you are hearing about it in the news. It's a very important situation to understand. And the community is organizing out there in a, in a very difficult circumstance. A absolutely. Um, thanks to you, I had the opportunity to volunteer out there on Sunday. And uh, there was hundreds of cars lined up from people right. that had, for three weeks, had not been able to get their vehicles to their homes. Right. Uh, to, 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 navigate through that area of road that was was down we were giving them rides on golf carts back and forth to their vehicles yep. some of them had carts some were elderly some weren't right. some right. wanted rides some didn't but but what a what a what a local uh, uh, opportunity for us to help out our fellow neighbors. Absolutely. Yeah, my understanding is a couple weeks ago, the, the whole road slid down the hill and there's a remaining portion of it about wide enough for one car. And a lot of these people are walking about three quarters of a mile to get to their car and to get out of the community. In fact, right alongside the road now for, I don't know, what was that? A couple of miles is yeah. the new water line because the water line broke too. So they had no fresh water. There's a temporary water line that, that uh, Contra Costa Water District put up. Right. Uh, and uh, these people, uh, it, you know, even though we live in a very urban environment, it's, um, it's amazing that in a, there's, such, there's a rural area there yeah. that needs our, our help and our consideration, our support and our prayers. Yeah. And I want to thank uh, a good number of people. I know our public works department is working really hard to get the Absolutely. problem fixed. The county really needs a lot of your support to get that problem solved for our locals. But the community, though, uh, I want to thank folks like Frank Nixon. Uh, I want to thank uh, Renee Vermillion and Bob Vermillion. I want to thank the many members of AMVETS Post 26 and Vietnam Veterans of Diablo Valley. Jim Moore, Mike Weber, Steve Mazeiker, a couple of them. And, uh, and, and you, Kevin. Well, and you guys have put plan. in a lot of hours uh, helping these folks get back and forth, and I think the work's not done. We want uh, to mention uh, uh, Vietnam helicopters for their donations and some of their equipment, too, to be able to transport these folks right. back and forth. The Vietnam Helicopter Museum donated a military mule, right. and uh, our VA clinic in Martinez do right. donated a fantastic golf cart that protects these people from the rain. Uh, it's, got, it's got doors on it, and it's a great way to get back and forth rather than you know carrying your week's worth of supplies on your back. Some of the folks I, I, I saw there, they have to get up, but they have to, to start walking to their cars yeah. at six in the morning to take their kids to school wow. so they can get to Clayton in time to right. go to school. So they need they need uh, support. I know that our supervisor Dan Burgess is doing a good job with uh, working along with the Public Works Department out there. But let's keep them in our prayers and uh, hope that the uh, Public Works can get that road fixed as soon as possible. Well, thanks for letting us talk about that important uh, community event. And again, we invite you to participate in tonight's discussion. The title is Your Dear Mr. Secretary. And we want to hear from you. We know you have thoughts. We know you have opinions. Uh, we know you have concerns. We know you have optimism about how uh, this new VA secretary and this new administration are going to impact uh, benefits for our veterans. And this is something I think near and dear to our hearts, Kevin. Uh, I'm a veteran. Your, your son served in the military. You also serve in the National Guard. We talk about benefits every right. month. What are your thoughts uh, on, on tonight's topic? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a wait and see 
um, approach that I'm taking at this point. Yeah. I don't want to be quick to, to make any judgment calls. Um, we know what the problems are. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 this administration doesn't ha ha um, have any greater problems than the previous administration has. Right. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed. Right. But, I, but I'll go back to something that I say quite often, and I've said to you before too, Nathan, and that is that 90% of what the VA does, they do, they do a pretty good job Absolutely. of, especially their health benefits. They really do a good job. But that 10% is tragic. That 10%, that, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know what the exact numbers are. But, but the part that they don't do well is the part that gets the bad press, and it should. Right. We should be concerned about that. You know, we yeah. talk about, we talk about um, uh, the Affordable Care Act. You know, everybody should have health care. Oh, my gosh, everybody should, especially our veterans, right. should have health care, quality health care that they can reach, that they can attain, whether it's through the Choice Program right. or whatever the options are. They need to be able to get there, get into their appointments, and get taken care of. Yeah, I get concerned about how much we put on our VA. You know, I think that a lot, as a nation, we're very grateful for our veterans and for our military, and, uh, and we know that they endure a lot, and we know that that service uh, often affects them for a lifetime. And I think as a community, we often just look at the VA to solve these problems and to care for these wounds without looking at our own individual responsibilities and obligations. You know, when I think about employment, Mm -hmm. I think, and when I think about housing, uh, you know, I think about as a community, what are we doing as individuals to offer veterans a good career, a good job? Well, it's and, a culture, right? right? I mean, this is a culture that we need to develop. Part of your job, part of my job, your job as a county veteran service officer, my job with CalVet right. is to try to develop that culture so that as a community, we take care of our veterans. But we know that the VA's got a lot of growing to do, and we know as an agency it's transitioned a lot over the years. They've gone away from paper to electronic. I mean, here we are in you know the year 2017, and the VA's just accomplishing those things. And they've got to get their systems down so they're most efficient, and they've got to give the right tools to their employees. So there's some challenges out, for, out, out there for them. And it's good that we're talking about this because you know this is how we feel, and this is what right. we think. But what we want to hear and what we want to know from you tonight, our audience, is what are your thoughts about the current administration, uh, specifically on the topic of veterans? I'm sure that there's a lot of opinions about the current administration in regards to other topics, but we want to have a clean discussion tonight. We don't want to argue with you. We don't want to tell you you're right or you're even wrong. We just want to hear from you and if it's a perspective that you have on veterans. Met veterans topics, veterans issues, VA benefits. We want to hear from you tonight. Our phones are open. Dear Mr. Secretary, if you had an opportunity, what would you say? What would you ask for? What would you suggest? Because you guys, you, the veterans that we talk to in this show, are the ones that understand the problems, understand the challenges. Um, and so we want to make sure that, that we get your opinions on this. And it may not seem like they go anywhere, but they may. Uh, and, and, every, and every idea you have may be the right idea that can make a difference and a change. So it's very important that your opinions be heard here tonight. I agree. And we'll bring on another expert uh, from, from the State uh, Department of uh, AMVETS. And uh, we'll, we'll get to hear about how AMVETS may be a place for veterans to communicate their voice. And we'll have a discussion even with uh, Maurice Delmer, one of our own production crew members. And uh, we'll help uh, veterans understand, and even our community. We don't want to just hear from veterans tonight. We want to hear from the whole community. And uh, Maurice will help us understand how social media is a powerful tool. So we've got a question here. Uh, let me get a cue from our production team. We have time to take this question. Okay, so uh, we've got a question here from James Mattis uh, from Brentwood, California. James is a Marine Corps veteran. Thanks, James Mattis, for your question. How long do you anticipate the hiring freeze to last within the VA? How is the freeze affecting the overall production? Is the claims process taking longer? It seems as though the freeze is preventing the VA from purging its underachiever and fostering a competitive environment. What a great question. Thank you, Mr. Mattis. Uh -oh. And so let's, let's kind of break that down. We're all aware that, you know, there's a federal hiring freeze. And in, I, in some areas. In some areas, and it has affected the VA. Yeah, it has. Uh, in fact, um, up until recently, general information has become available that, uh, that the VA has lifted a portion of that freeze right. on certain roles within the Healthcare Administration, the Benefits Administration, and National Cemeteries. I think what they've identified are the critical roles that provide service to a veteran. Right. You know, they don't want 
doctors to be vacant. They don't want da vacant right. doctors They're still positions, filling slots. Right? They definitely still they want slots claims there. representatives to make decisions on uh, on benefits. In fact, just today we had a veteran in our office who submitted a tinnitus claim back in December, and he actually reached a, uh, the VA reached a decision on his claim Fantastic. today. So you look at about three three and a half months for the VA to decide a claim. Well, they've made such such accomplishments, right. especially here in the Oakland branch where we had so many problems. Right. You know, right. we know we th that's history, but we know about it. Right. We've made so many, uh, pr so much progress that we don't want to start moving uh, backwards. And I think the administration has gotten that yeah. word and knows that we need to continue to move forward with, yeah. uh, with, with, without any hindrance. And I think veterans should be concerned about how this hiring freeze is going to affect. You know, they're going to want to know. Uh, are, you know, if I show up for my appointment, is my doctor going to be there? Am I going to have a doctor? You know, if I submit this claim, is the VA going to make a decision on it? Or is it going to sit, uh, you know, in a warehouse somewhere unprocessed? And I think, I think a lot of that fear and anxiety comes from, as, as you mentioned, that the, the way VA has done business in the past, uh, but they've really worked a lot towards improving on uh, health care and the time to wait for an appointment and the benefits, uh, you know, t in terms of time to uh, come up with a decision, right. make a decision on and a claim. E even in, in their attempts to, to make health care available to all veterans through right. choice program, through the rural programs that they have, right. because not everybody lives in, in, a, in, a, in an urban area like we do and has readily accessible, I mean, what, the hospital's right across the freeway here. But um, I think this last part of this question is interesting. It seems as though the freeze is preventing the VA from purging its underachiever and fostering a competitive environment. Um, that is yet to be seen. I don't know if I, it's hard to develop an opinion on that so early into yeah. this administration, but we hope not. You know, we hope that that um, the, the system will be corrected in that uh, you have to be productive to be yeah. able to be an employee. You have to do what you're supposed to be doing. You have to um, do it because it's the right thing to do, not because you're getting a bonus at the end. Well, uh, it makes me think back to uh, just recently, I, th I think before the new year, uh, General Dunford, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, he, he talked about public service and he said what a, what a joy it was to be a public servant because being a public servant meant that you had the opportunity to solve the problems that other people wanted to have solved. Absolutely. So I think, you know, our question here from Mr. Mattis really means, you know, is, is this hiring freeze going to stop this, this talent pool that really wants to be a part of public service and it, is it going to stop them from the opportunity, you know, to, to be hired, to be trained and to get to work? So appreciate the question from uh, from James there in Brentwood, very California. Very thoughtful. And what are your thoughts on that? You know, now that we've got the uh, the ice has has been broken open. You know, we've we've had someone already take a risk and, and put their thoughts and and express themselves in regards to this recent administration. We want you as an audience to get involved as well. Phone lines are open. You can call us if you don't want to call and you want to send an anonymous chat. You can do so. Uh, of, uh, over our website, ContraCostaTV.org. Contra and there they can just, and just you can, exactly, it. or you can send us an email as well. Plenty of ways to get a hold of us tonight. Got a great discussion about everything, and uh, we'll, have, we'll have some experts here on the show. Absolutely. We recently caught up with veterans at a local VA clinic to find out what changes they like to see for the VA and what's been working for them so far. We're live tonight and our discussion is being led again by your voice. So please call or write in now and we'll incorporate your thoughts when we return. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan with Veterans Voices and we're here at our local VA to ask veterans uh, what they think about uh, veterans issues and the future of the healthcare system. How do you see VA leadership making a positive impact on the quality of healthcare for veterans? Well, up to this point, it's been, uh, I believe, very, very well. Uh, we don't know what the future holds, but I hope the future holds, uh, if not the same, uh, you know, betterness. The people here are nice, but, you know, there are times when they could take in more consideration what the vets have been through. Um, you know, there are times when vets come in distressed. They react off the veteran. Um, they need to calm down and, and take the veterans viewpoint too you know uh, we've been through a lot. I, I see a lot of um, leaders here on campus actually stepping up and actually showing a genuine care for the veterans um, listening to their needs and um, allowing veterans to kind of voice their concerns about um, 
what's going on? I think it's okay. Uh, I did have a lot of problems in the beginning, especially with uh, you know different doctors and appointments and whatnot. But uh, it just seemed like they're uh, doing pretty good right now. I'm sure some people are dissatisfied because you read about it all the time. The VA doesn't have enough money, etc. And hopefully, with Trump and what he said about for going all the way for veterans, he means it. We'll see. We we we'll see if he backs it up. What aspects of the VA healthcare, you know, system or VA care could be improved? Uh, as I said, the people here are nice, but. You know, there are times when they could take in more consideration what the vets have been through. Um, you know, there are times when vets come in distressed. They react off the veteran. Um, they need to calm down and, and take the veteran's viewpoint too. You know, uh, we've been through a lot. It needs to really address the issues without the cover up. Without what issues specifically or? The, the level of care those that are not being helped. Um, personally, I've been delighted with the care, you know, but I know that from what I hear, that's not everyone. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, those that are not being cared for are not being listened to. And the, the cover up, what, what's, you know, expose, tell the truth, expose what is out there that's not doing right. I think the VA has been really great to me so yeah. far, so I'm hoping that they can continue maybe like make processes a little more effective, quick, and you know less uh, less of a wait for the veteran. That would be great. Uh, that's I, that's what I'd like to see, making it easier for veterans and uh, less more affordable. Anything that can be done to change that would be great. Yeah. What would you say to those people who are discouraged from their experiences? Um, I would say that you, you, like any other health care, you need to be persistent because the only way you're going to get you taken care of is to be that advocate. And if you can't do it, then they need to provide someone here in the facility that can advocate for you. Tonight's show is Dear Mr. Secretary. This is an opportunity to share your vision for the future of the Department of Veterans Affairs. What veterans issues do you want policymakers to advocate for? Lend your voice to our discussion tonight by calling in right now or write in. Our phones are open 925-313-1170. We want to hear from you. I want to show appreciation for Ryan Berg, who uh, just did our first uh, veteran on the street a a segment. I thought that went really well. That was Absolutely. great to actually get out of the studio and talk to veterans on camera about what they think and what they feel about tonight's topic. And we're going to do this again in future shows. And I think we've got some great ideas. We want to get out there and really uh, uh, get an understanding of what the community is thinking and feeling about veterans. So thanks so much to uh, Corporal Ryan Berg, Marine Corps Iraq War veteran. Joining our discussion are, is a veteran who's involved in national and statewide veterans affairs, and he holds le a leadership role. Commander Enrique Rudino is with the California Department, uh, he's a California Department Commander for American Veterans, or AMVETS. So welcome to the show, Commander. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. You came from a long ways away, Yuba City. Tell appreciate us a little bit about, yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Commander. Well, I spent uh, 22 years in the United States Army, joined the Army in 1972 uh, as a truck driver. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a pretty good job. Vietnam Air. Uh, yeah. Vietnam Air, yes. I, I did not serve in Vietnam, but I served in Germany, and I spent uh, my last three years uh, as a drill sergeant training uh, training soldiers uh, to be uh, to go into combat. It was it was a tough job to do that field. I married a wife uh, who spent 38 years in the military, mm. and she spent three years wow. in Iraq. Is she in the Army as well? Yeah, she's an Army veteran as well, okay. and she's a combat veteran as well. Right. Yes. Well, we hope she's watching tonight, and we hope to hear from her. We'd love to have the perspective of a woman veteran in regards to this current administration. So thank you so much, Commander, for being here tonight. So we've already talked a lot about and set, set a framework for, for our audience, and uh, we had a question in regards to you know, the, the current administration, particularly hiring freezes. And we just watched a great video uh, that really addressed a lot, of, a lot of issues and concerns. And what are your thoughts so far on the, on the topics we've, we've discussed? 
Well, there's, a, there's going to be some changes that occur, I'm mm -hmm. sure, because of the new administration. Right. Uh, you know, our congressmen and, you know, congressmen have to make a decision on how they want to help the veterans out. You know, their priorities have to be on the very top of the list to help veterans. And uh, we, have to be, we have to push legislation through each one of them, in the state, especially here in the state of California, because there's so many of them that we can contact. So uh, legislation is very important. You have to go out and talk to your congressman. So what, what, expect, what expectations do you have uh, or does AMVETS have then for the new administration in regards to veterans benefits? Well, some of the veterans benefits are important. Uh, some of the things that we are, are actually talk, we need to consider or want to see the, the new administration focus on is that's mental health and suicide prevention or suicide right. awareness. Uh, there's 22 veterans today committing suicide, and that's because they're not receiving the help as they're supposed to in the in the, in the VA system, and so they're just they're just giving up, boom, and they're and they're done. Right. So we need to try to maybe act on on those issues. Uh, they just recently were recently wanting to pass uh, legislation uh, f to service those who receive other than honorable discharge. Very Be important, yeah. Because before it was just if you had an honorable discharge, you were getting help in the VA. Now it's if you have other than honorable discharge, you can go and get help. From the VA, uh, and those are the individuals that are, are committing suicide or they're, they're committing a crime and they're getting they're they're becoming incarcerated because of those issues. Great. Well, thank you for that perspective. We've got a caller here, so we'll get, we'll get to the caller and and we'll come back to talk more about this. and And this is great. So we've got Gabriel from Rodeo. Gabriel, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Nathan, this is Gabriel, the Gabriel that you know that helped me file my claim a while back. Hey, well, hey, good talk to you, Gabriel. Thanks for calling good in tonight. To Thanks for well. watching. Fantastic to yeah, hear thanks. from you. I've watched, I've watched the show a couple times now. Oh, very yeah. cool. Very good. Well, we hope that it's a good opportunity for you to learn about veterans' benefits and, and veterans' topics. So hopefully you've been, uh, been watching the past uh, 15 or 20 minutes of the show, and, and we're curious about your thoughts. Or What do you think about the new administration, specifically uh, the new secretary and veterans' benefits? Well, I have to say that I'm, I'm somewhat impressed. Um, I've noticed and I've watched, for example, a, a live broadcast that he did, um, I think about two, three weeks ago on YouTube. Um, you know, I've been paying attention to some of the blogs and different websites in regards to what some of his goals are, are and what he would like to do with the VA. So overall, I'm pretty impressed. Um, so overall, this, is, this is Dr. Shulkin big, that you're talking about? Yes, that's, okay. yeah. Thank yeah. You. So one big negative thing that I heard about mm -hmm. him is um, that he's not a veteran, but for the most part, it seems like a lot of veterans are willing to overlook that, and I think that's good. So, so um, that's that's good. Let me. I, so talk about that, Gabriel. Why is that important to you? Because I agree that it should be important, and obviously it's been talked about, uh, right. whether Dr. Shulkin is a veteran or not. And my understanding, he's the first secretary of the VA who's not a veteran. So, so tell us why that's, because you said it's a negative thing. So why is it important to you, Gabriel? Well, I'm not saying it's necessarily a big deal to me. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that that's what some veterans have been saying. Okay. I've been seeing it all, all over social media. Uh -huh. uh, I can't say that a lot of veterans are saying that. Right. But I personally believe, and I, I can't say I'm speaking on their behalf, but I do have an understanding that they just want someone who really understands them. Right. And I think that might be the one big negative thing. But other than that, like I said, um, I overall read some of the, some of the things that you like to accomplish some of the visions that he'd like to do, and for the most part, I think he, um, he's doing pretty good so far. So what I'm hearing is, is that he's communicating really well to the community. You're watching him in some of the blogs and some of the, the interviews that he's doing. What kind of things are, what kind of things are he, is he talking about, Gabriel, that, you're, that you're, really, you're really liking about the new secretary? Well, one thing, an example that I, I was impressed with was during his YouTube uh, broadcast, um, there was a question for him that had to deal with the cemetery affairs. And if my memory serves me correct, he redirected the question to someone that could better answer the question for him. Mm -hmm. And basically what, he say, what, he, what I was seeing is that I'm not a subject matter expert on that, but he is, let's turn to him. And I, I was right. impressed with that. That's a very good leadership that, role. That is, that's a very good point. Yep. Saying with us, Gabriel. We'll yeah, I want to say is that the, the VA has a system that's set up uh, to help anyone who's employed at the VA to understand the military culture. So they're actually briefed on what a veteran is, what a veteran right. is all about. So that's one of the main things that I hope he continues to do that is to bring that training into every VA and help them understand. The one thing that I want to say about the, the new secretary, he has, the, he has the, the experience of being in the medical field which uh, he, hopefully he'll understand some of the mental health issues that right. veterans have to deal with, the PTSD and TBI, which are very serious injuries. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I, and, and I, I agree 100%. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point too, Gabriel. Is that he's not afraid to ask uh, and and get the and and get the uh, information from somebody that knows the answer. I, I want to go back to the you brought brought up a good point, Enrique, with regards to the man on the street and the, yeah. and one of the people that was interviewed that Ryan interviewed talked about how the people that work at the VA need to be more understanding uh, of what it means to be a veteran, right. which goes right along, ties right into what you were saying. And um, I think that if there, yeah, th I think that's a very important point. What's your opinion on that, Gabriel? If, if just to, to refresh our audience, uh, one of the comments was that the doctors need to, although they're, they're elevated by the level of stress of the veteran, they need to be more understanding. So what do you think about the doctors and the nurses uh, at the VA healthcare system in terms of their cultural competency of uh, veterans? I think it's extremely important. Uh, I go to the VA often myself. I go to the one Martinez, but I go to different VAs because of my work, which I'm not going to mention at this time, but I do get involved with a lot of different VAs, and it seems a good portion of the individuals who work there are veterans, but there also is a good portion that are not. And I think it's very important that those who are not really have an understanding, just the basics, the lingo, the, 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 the talk and the way they act and what they've done so they can understand and better understand, you know, what they're dealing with. So I don't know if that answers your question. No, that's, those are very good points, Gabriel, and you're absolutely correct in that, That because um, I personally am not a veteran, yet I work for the California Department of Veterans Affairs. Right. I currently serve, but I'm not a veteran, um, and so, you have to embrace the culture of, of who you're right. serving. What's the best way to do that then, Kevin? Being that you're not a veteran, what's been the most effective way for you to understand what veterans have gone through? I, I, I put myself through um, a military culture classes to make sure I understood when people were talking about different things, what, what, what it meant. And a lot of it is just experience. Right. It takes a long time to be able to, or not a long time, but it takes some time to be able to understand the different uh, dialect, it's a, it's a separate, it's a, it's a whole and different... that's because everyone is different. Yeah. Everyone's going to experience a right. different thing, a different experience in, in, in their role in the military. Right. You have the Navy, you have the, Ar you have the Army, the Air Force, uh, Coast Guard, what would I leave out? The Marine Corps, sorry about that. Calm down, that. calm down. <laughs> so you have all these different individuals that served in the military that have a different experience. Right. So the VA has to understand, the employees have to understand that they need help individually. And, right. and, and if you're talking to an officer, their culture is made different than if you're talking yeah. to a, an E4. No, right. you know? So yes. you have to be able to adapt to that and understand that. But I find, too, that, that, that I talk to those individuals differently. I'm sure when you're sure, I a different amount of respect here than here because they don't, the, the spec for it doesn't want the, the same, doesn't, didn't earn it, didn't expect it. Right. So you right. have to adjust how you address each individual. A great point in, exactly. as an individual. So, Gabriel, first. before we let you go, what other veterans' issues concern you today, uh, given this current administration? Is there anything else, uh, you know, on the tip of your tongue or, or, you know, something that you think about on a daily basis in regards to how veterans' benefits could be improved? Um, there's two. Uh, given the work that I do, um, you know what I do, uh, but I'm not really going to talk about because. I'm not calling an, an official representative of the organization that I work for, but one that's really important to me is uh, veterans with PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, I, for example, know that the vet centers here in the local Bay Area are great. The one in Concord, the one in Oakland are great. They do great right. work. Absolutely. But I put myself out there on social media for friends that, hey, if you have a veteran, if you, if you are going through some issues, I know a few people in a few different places. I know some things you may not know. I have friends who are still in the military active duty, and they haven't transitioned out of the uniform yet. And many of them think they're ready to transition, but and we both know that that's not the case with many veterans. Um, and I believe that the vet centers across the country, for the most part, are doing great. I've talked to veterans that have utilized the vet centers. Um, I, just, I guess I kind of just wish that the VA would put in a little more emphasis on maybe getting more vet centers in some of these areas and cities that don't have a lot of organizations to represent represent them. I've, I've met people, for example, in Alaska in rural parts of California where the nearest VA is 50, 100 miles away oh, wow. uh, and they have nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one big thing for me. But also another thing is a, a, a non-traditional approach to PTSD treatment, peer-to-peer uh, -peer support, outdoor activities, not okay. just your traditional let's sit down and talk for an hour and meet mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, th I know many veterans from my generation, from our generation, the, the younger generation, um, have a very different mindset. And I say that respectively to the Vietnam vets because I do work 
with a lot of Vietnam vets. But I believe that our generation of veterans have a very different approach, and many of them do enjoy doing these outdoor activities uh, where it has nothing to do with let's just sit down and write down some notes and talk about it next week. Just hang out and talk and keep it simple. I think that's something that many veterans would love to do. Um, but unfortunately, you. some cities and towns just don't have that access. No, you're right, Gabriel. And uh, but 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 let's also remember that the reason we have vet centers is because of Vietnam era vets that, that said Absolutely. we need right. we need a location for them. But you make some really great points, and especially with regards to the physical exercise, getting out. I mean, you have to be active. You have to be mobile. You have to get out there and attack. Uh, be willing to address your issues, and sometimes that comes through through these physical activities. And I think it's awesome that, that, that the vet centers typically have somebody that's involved with that and that they they'll take, take, the, lead. To take yeah. the lead on providing uh, outdoor recreational activities. We want to also bring out the point that uh, AVIDS is uh, trying to pass legislation on what they call CAM, Contemporary Alternative, alternative uh, Medicine, okay. which includes that's exercise, well, includes yoga, okay. hiking, uh, going out back, horseback riding, scuba diving, uh, uh, archery, different activities that get the veteran's mind off of what he's dealing with onto something else. So that's one legislation that we need to try to enforce or try to push through the, uh, our congressmen is to let them know that we're interested in this and holistic medicine as well. Mm -hmm. I'm a Native American. Right. Sweat lodges is one of the things that really, really work. I uh, go to the Utah VA and they've been using that for a long time up there. Right. Yes, they have. Yes. It's, uh, it's, it, 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 alternative medicine is, a, is, I think, is a key uh, to providing a well-rounded uh, health care system. And I think that, that, we, uh, that the VA has resisted uh, because of the conventional doctor setup. And not that that's not needed also, but the, the, the traditional mental health approach, yeah. uh, it, it's obviously not working as well as it should they be. They haven't done enough research on it yet. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why they're not implementing it. Their research is not there. Well, Gabriel, yeah, I want to no, thank you for calling in. It's been fantastic to hear your voice. I appreciate all that you do. Gabriel, I encourage you to continue to stay involved. You can make a difference in this world for our veterans. And just like Gabriel did, I invite our audience, call in, chat, email. We want to thank hear you, from Gabriel. you tonight. Appreciate so thank it. you, thank Gabriel. You. And we've got a question here from Riz Minion. Minion? Minion. Minion from Riz. So Riz, thank you so much. I, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your last name correctly. No, uh, no intentions there. No, um, but Riz would like to know why do disabled vets have to get health insurance via Affordable Care Act? It's a good question. You know, if you're, uh, if you're covered, excuse me, let me not say covered. If you're enrolled in the VA health care system, mm -hmm. and if you're a disabled veteran, I would hope that you would have a service-connected rating mm -hmm. uh, if that disability is related to your service. So if you're enrolled in the VA health care system, mm -hmm. that meets the minimum essential coverage that's, that's requirements. True. And I know there's some changes, and, and we may want to talk about that. If the Affordable Care Act changes, how that might ch affect the VA health care system. We've only got about, uh, I'm getting a wrap-up signal here, but Let's let's come back to that I question. Think it's early to try to determine that at this point, yeah. because we don't know where it's exactly. going to be. There's some new legislation out there. Yeah. Some are opposed to it. Some right. are for it. We don't even right. know what direction Riz, that's going yet. So we're a little early on that. Yeah, we're a little early on that. It's important for Riz to know and for other veterans to know that if you are enrolled in the health care system, that meets, meets that the point. Affordable yeah, Care Act. You should be getting documents from the VA, in fact, every year, mm -hmm. saying here's a statement keep this with your taxes. So I don't yeah, know exactly. of any requirement that they have to buy additional insurance, at least for the veteran. The VA no. healthcare system does not cover the family. So thank you so much, Riz and Gabriel and, and uh, James. We've had a lot of great input and questions and comments, and we encourage you to keep contributing uh, on tonight's show. For more information on the organizations and resources discussed tonight, go to our website. There you'll also find our calendar which highlights upcoming veterans events and programs. One of those is coming up on April 29th. The exhibit, Remembering Our Fallen, will open at San Francisco Airport's Hyatt Regency and continue until May 1st. For more information on other locations within the Bay Area also, go to rememberingourfallen.org. Staying involved with veterans events is a great way to stay connected and informed. We'll have more events coming up later in the show and when we return, we'll take more of your calls. Stay tuned. I'm Ryan and I'm here at the local VA hospital. I'm a veteran and I'm here to ask other veterans their thoughts on the future of the VA healthcare system and policies. Are there any specific improvements um, that you'd like to see within the VA? Um, 
Well, I'm speaking obviously like for the younger generations, but you know, I see a lot of you know older people in the VA, so like, um, I'd like to see you know them get you know whatever they need. Maybe just transportation, helping VAs get to their appointments. Um, I think Uber might be a good help. Mm -hmm. It's like Uber's inexpensive, and if they can work with the VAs, it would help everybody. So maybe a partnership or collaboration with a, a company to help get veterans to their appointments? That, that would definitely be a benefit. Mm -hmm. no, I think doctors be, need to be more uh, attentive to their patients because, you know, you have one doctor that's got a lot of patients. When I say a lot, well, uh, anywhere between maybe three, uh, three to 600 patients for one doctor. So that particular doctor can't be that attentive. So therefore, some things may be overlooked. But uh, overall, you know, I feel it's okay. You know, I'm, I don't have a lot of complaints so yeah. far. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I, I see some changes, but I don't see enough changes. Um, wait times are not okay. Um, services sometimes are not okay. How do you see the VA, if the VA were to privatize or, you know, give veterans um, access to private health care, how do you see that benefiting benefiting them? Well, I'm not a, a positive about it. I, uh, mm -hmm. I know that's the promise and the, what they want to try to do, but I could see it to have that door available for those that need it. But like I said, what brought me here in the first place was I, the civilian docs I just didn't identify with. Whereas here, I mean, they're all veterans, <laughs> you know, so I'm more comfortable coming here for care. Actually, I do have access to private medical um, only because I'm low income, but it's like being able to have a choice between both or options to use both, it would be extremely helpful. How so? Because like myself, I come here to Martinez, uh, the clinics here, but they're only open Monday through Friday, basically eight to five. Um, if we have the ability and the option to go to others when, you know, 24 hours a day, it's always a benefit. I think having VA healthcare is really important to me because uh, my experience in the civilian world has not been the same. And for me, I've gone out and, you know, after getting out of the military, I've gone out and uh, seen other, you know, doctors, and my experience has not been the same. And I, I, when I came back to the VA, I just felt so much more comfortable, like, like I was back in the military, you know, like getting the same, you know, care. So it's kind of kind of strange, but I feel that the VA health healthcare is better than the civilian healthcare. All right, welcome back. We really hope you enjoyed that. We enjoyed it ourselves. It was great to see that uh, veterans were actually engaging with our, our camera crew and sharing their opinions and uh, telling us a little bit about their experiences as veterans. So you've been watching our segment again, Veteran on the Street interview series, and we'd like to continue doing this segment. Every show will have a different topic. We want to thank the Department of Veterans Affairs for giving us the opportunity to capture the opinions of their patients. If you'd like to share your thoughts and suggestions on how we can better serve veterans, go to our homepage and join the Veterans Voices Viewer Advisory Panel. Man, that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's not that hard. It's harder <laughs> saying it than it is to participate in it. Our viewer advisory panel is an important format for feedback. You can complete a short survey after each episode, and it'll give you the chance to voice your thoughts and help shape the direction of our show. On our website, you'll also find our calendar with upcoming veterans events. The 2017 Walk of Honor for our veterans will be held in Crockett on May 20th. The walk will be followed by a barbecue luncheon with live entertainment and a raffle. Contact Vietnam Veterans at Diablo Valley for more information. I'm going to go off script here for a second. I want to say two things. First of all, welcome back to Airman, maybe Senior Airman yes. Millie Bass, who is actually back from Afghanistan yeah. early. Welcome back. 
Millie Bass. She's in, she's in the studio tonight. That's why we're doing this, guys. You hear the hand claps because yeah. she's here in she's a dress. In studio. Last time I saw her, she was in a dirty pair of camis, and she'd been flying for two days on her way back from Afghanistan. We're so glad she's back alive and healthy in one piece. And she's actually running our Facebook Live segment right now. So if you're on Facebook, you can watch the behind the scenes. So thank you so much, Millie, for being on the show. I also want to welcome to the set, and hopefully his microphone's working, because he, he was just doing Facebook Live about 60 seconds ago. And so we got such a good production team here. Maurice Delmer, and he's a uh, Marine Corps Iraq War veteran. So welcome to the set, Mo. Thanks for and having me again. I, I, want, yeah. I want to just say real quick, so we were talking earlier about alternative uh, ways of, right. of, of mental health and, be, and, and, and trying to... to, to transition right. and that's what Mo does. Mo, right. every Saturday he's out there with veterans t doing different, uh, in fact, I believe I'm going skiing with you this Saturday. I hope so. Let's and uh, any, any vets out there that want to go, let, let you know, contact me. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm here in a different hat today. I'm not, I'm not here, rep I work at the, at the Concord Vet Center, but I, I'm, I'm not here representing the Con Delmer. Concord Vet Center. I'm here as Maurice Delmer today. Good job. But thanks for pointing that out. Well, I just wanted to acknowledge that yeah. in fact, it's a great pro great programs yeah. and you and you do some great stuff it's very effective heard great things about it so we've got uh, a question here by email thank you so much we've got gary four i would ask mr secretary to take a look at the great va medical and mental health services being provided for vets in Contra Costa County. The mutual support provided between the VA, our County Veterans Service Office, and local veteran service organization, organizations, which we have many of them here in the county. Absolutely. Uh, the, anyways, the, the mutual support provided is incomparable. What we have can serve as a standard that should be attained elsewhere in the country. So this is Gary Four saying this by email. Thank you so much, Gary. Yeah, we'll for send you this. your $5 later, Gary. That was very nice of you to say. I appreciate that. Them very much but yeah, it's true yeah. it happens to be true I contra I, I happen to serve 10 counties within the Bay Area Incredible. and Contra Costa County is at, at at the top with other counties but up there with regards to the amount of services and benefits and attention that's paid to veterans in the community everybody steps up it's an it's an awesome thing to be a part of I agree it's incomparable Man, I've been corrected on my grammar a lot uh, lately. Well, like Not incomparable, like incomparable. Something about that, yeah. that right there that he mentioned is that, I'm thank right. you, Gary, for that comment, is that, you know, uh, building strong community collaboratives, which is what he's refocusing on here, is that right. we have many organizations out there that ha have the same mission in mind, the same focus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we build together a collaborative individuals, uh, that's a cohesive network to, to be that rooted in, in trust and respect towards veterans and their families. Never forget the families right. because they're a key part of this collaborative. Absolutely. Yes. I, I agree. I mean, these, these programs, these benefits also serve those families. Yes. And so we should solicit their opinion and their feedback in regards to these these programs and and they also serve serve the veteran so I was just gonna say you know a lot of times when we're, when we're doing our resource yeah. fairs or when we're out there it's the it's the families that come to us first yeah. that want to help their service member exactly. uh, they're the ones that ask the question what can I do to help my brother what can I do to help yeah. my husband what yeah. can I do to help my yeah. son mm -hmm. those are where we sometimes get are able to give the best guidance so commander you're you're active statewide mm -hmm. and Mo you're active and throughout the entire world because you're very active in social media. So what other models do you see out there that might be good for the secretary to take a look at? And how can these other models best communicate with other communities to make sure that we're, we understand these best practices? Well, I don't want to come off as an expert here. I, I use social media myself. Um, what do you use? I use Facebook primarily. Okay. I, I've gotten onto Twitter. Um, I've stayed away from Instagram or, or Snapchat or okay. some of these other, uh, you know, take a picture and it gets deleted right away. I don't mm -hmm. need that stuff. Uh, I'm sure they're useful for some for some people and what they do, mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't take away from that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that I think that the VA um, and, and and the new sec the incoming secretary, I'm sure, is going to adopt this. Um, uh, has taken advantage of so social media, especially Facebook and Twitter, uh, to start you know to to reach veterans, especially uh, and. and 
and this isn't directed, uh, there's no um, ill will towards the Vietnam veterans and their lack of, possible lack of uh, technological uh, prowess, but. Hey, I have that lack of You know, me too, me too. We're all learning, you know, it's, right. tech, technology increases and it leaves the rest of us behind, I think. Um, but, you know, especially to the, you know, returning veterans and, and newer generation of veterans, um, it, the VA is really targeting them with, with social media. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know last year uh, there was a couple, uh, uh, there's a collaboration between, I think, Team Red, White, and Blue and uh, the Vet Center program. What's uh, Team Red, White, Team Red, White, and Blue is, a, is an organization, uh, a recent organization that started, um, a nationwide organization that started to promote veterans, uh, you know, wellness and uh, rehabilitation through physical activity mm -hmm. uh, upon returning from, uh, you know, getting out of the military, returning from, uh, getting, out of, getting off of active duty, mm -hmm. um, and, and to connect them both with uh, physical fitness, physical wellness, and and uh, social uh, engagement in the community. So, so is social media a good way for, you know, if, this, if the secretary didn't physically come out and meet with, could, could Red Team Red, White, and Blue and the secretary interact through social media? And if so, what's the best way for the two of them to communicate so that whatever Team Red, White, and Blue is doing, the secretary can understand and maybe support uh, other efforts to well, do something similar? And, you know, I, I don't think it's just to the VA. You know, I think, you know, Team Red, White, and Blue, I think the VFW is even, you know, Veterans of Foreign War is even recognizing organizations like Team Red, White, and Blue and how they speak to this generation of, vet, the new generation of veterans um, in terms of that. That uh, just engagement and connection and wanting to be engaged and involved and, and, and I, I want to say this is all credit credit is uh, all credit is due to the Vietnam veterans for making sure that you know this this is possible uh, this would you know if it wasn't for Vietnam veterans saying you know we're not gonna let future generations go scorned like we were right. this wouldn't be po I don't think this would be possible uh, but but back to you back to your point you know I think that uh, you know, the VA can collab absolutely collaborate with these organizations uh, there's definitely room for this for that to take place I think VA actually I, I've seen you know, the VA answering questions on its Facebook page, um, you know, VA Northern California Healthcare System answering questions uh, from veterans. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, and, and maybe, give, give uh, maybe. Give us an example. I mean, uh, what kind of questions? You know, I don't even, and I can't even remember if it's, the, you know, VA Northern California or yeah. if it's a broader VA, but, you know, hey, you know, my, um, you know, I'm, I'm really upset about this issue that okay. happened at the VA. Uh, at my VA clinic, uh, and and the VA provided an answer. Maybe it wasn't a suitable answer, but at least they're making an attempt to reach veterans um, at the time and place they have their need. Maybe they need to develop a model. The new administration look, has, needs to look at a new model of this en engagement with the younger veterans, because there are a lot of vet younger veterans coming into our into the system. So let's talk about uh, and get. Uh, we're talking about social media, so in, in what ways does AMVETS or do other veteran service organizations, uh, if not AMVETS, do, in what ways do they either create a platform for veterans to express their opinions and thoughts and feelings, or in what ways does AMVETS and other organizations communicate with our veterans on what the priorities are, you know, and what's happening? Um, for, for example, the hiring freeze. Uh, is AMVETS or other organizations using Twitter to inform veterans about this hiring freeze and how it might impact them? I, I think there are a few people that are engaged, like you said. You know, Facebook, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of Facebook whenever okay. I, uh, you know, I'm out there in the public, I'm putting pictures of what we're doing on Facebook. Uh, other, other social media applications, like Twitter, I'm not into Twitter. I, you know, I am so involved in getting, you know, I belong to a lot of, like you, like you said, you wear different hats. This, I'm wearing this hat today, but yeah. I have wear different hats. Mm -hmm. And so right. you get involved with so many different things. But the younger veterans, they are, they, they are probably onto Twitter. So it sounds you know? like you gotta find your way, you gotta find your comfort yes. with what works for you on social media, whether it be Twitter, whether it be Snapchat or Facebook, book and you need to find your way to interact with our show tonight if you don't want to call in uh, we've had a few phone calls we've had a few questions by chat and email and there's plenty of ways for you to engage in the conversation tonight we've got some great folks on on tonight that uh, really uh, want to engage in the conversation about how the current administration might make some positive impacts on our veterans benefits and on veterans before we continue the conversation any further, I don't want to distract from the conversation, but I want to mention our shadow box because I failed to mention that earlier 
in the trans in the in the script uh, we have a shadow box from our Vietnam veteran from a local Vietnam veteran Michael Slattengren we call him Slats and uh, he's a Navy veteran so thank you Slats we actually had his father's shadow box on the show previously so I want to want to acknowledge Slats tonight thank you you know, I, I just well, like to add. Sorry. Go ahead. I just like to add to to what we were saying. I think veterans too, especially returning veterans, um, are really forming you know group their own un, unaffiliated groups on on in an online manner in a social media presence. Um, you know, one one way would be maybe through uh, the educational institution that they attend. You know, th if you're going to, you know, I hate to I mean, use UC Berkeley because that's my alma mater. You know, the Cal Vets group. It's it's an opportunity to engage in in a nonpartisan, uh, non-political way online in a, in a social media setting to pass on information, uh, critical information on employment, on uh, VA activities or VA benefits or resources, on community uh, uh, resources, and, and just on, I think, I don't know if I mentioned activities and things going on, both with the group and then in the community as well. Um, you know, DV, Diablo Valley College, which is in our backyard, is another example. The DVC Veterans Alliance uh, has a, a social media presence. Uh, and, and, you know, these are great ways, I think these are great opportunities opportunities for other organizations, the VA, the veteran service organizations, to engage with returning veterans, uh, to, you know, figure out who the, the uh, page admin, admin is to, or post to that page, here's what's going on, here's what's relevant, might be relevant to you and your, your audience. So that's just another thought that, that, that occurred to me while we were talking. One thing that's interesting, too, because uh, of my son's service, um, I've joined some uh, army, uh, uh, well. yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and, and you know, the, these, uh, the one-tenth goes back to the Vietnam era, the unit my son was a, was, uh, was a part of, and it crosses all generations. So, so you, get to, you, get to, you get the word out, especially when it comes to events and things that are coming up, reunions and all that type of thing. It's important to, uh, that, that, that it crosses ac uh, across generations at this point. It's become now so uh, commonly used that that um, my dad's 89 years old and he's you know he's not on Facebook but he's on the computer a lot so yeah. that kind of social media um, crosses generations now and it it, it it does get the word out uh, of all kinds of things resources as well as um, mental health wellness you know if you can get together with your buddies we talked about peer support earlier uh, it, it helps sure you know? We, you know we stay engaged with our with our the people we serve with in the military through social media you know I mean I I don't know if I'd be in touch touch with, you know, the, the guys that separated or retired in different parts of this country if it wasn't for Facebook. And, and then, you know, you get, you get to hear a, a, a lot of different perspectives that way as well that you might not have even heard while you were in the service. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a caller. We're going to take a caller in here in just a second, and we, we have to be really brief here because we're running out of time. So we got a caller coming in. But, gentlemen, I want to thank you because we've managed to have a conversation about a very hot topic, and we didn't fight each other. We didn't argue. We didn't yell at each other. We didn't discredit each other's opinions. You know, we gave, we showed respect and consideration, and we had some great uh, participation from our audience. So I want to thank you for being on here tonight. For more information on AMVETS, because we had Enrique, Commander Enrique Reduno join us uh, from AMVETS tonight. And like DAV, AMVETS, or American Veterans, is also a national organization with chapters throughout the country. I'm a life member. Mo? Life uh, annual member. Annual Sorry. member, okay. <laughs> so we're, we're all members. So they can be found at amvets.com. To share your feedback with the Department of Veterans Affairs, call their toll-free hotline 1-844-MY-VA-311. Boy, 844-MY-VA-311. Or go to the web address on your screen. If you're a veteran organization or group with an upcoming event, contact us and we'll add it to our calendar. The Valor Games are returning to, on June 2nd and will go until June 5th at Coast Guard Island in Alameda. If you'd like to participate or volunteer, and they need volunteers, go to ValorGamesFarWest.com. If you don't know what they are, please go check it out. It's awesome what these athletes do. Athlete applications are still being accepted. Go to our homepage, ContraCostaTV.org forward slash Veterans Voices to see additional events and resource information. Caller, we have you in the studio. We've got about 30 seconds. How can we help you? Hey, this is uh, Smitty Smith from the Veterans of Oakley. How y'all doing tonight? Thanks, Smitty. Thank Thanks, Thanks for waiting the last 30 seconds to call into the show. We appreciate yeah, your call. Yeah, I know. Call. I've been watching the whole show. I just wanted to respond to the topic that Maurice was talking about, uh, social media right. in the uh, veterans community. And, of course, you know the Veterans of Oakley have a great social media Facebook page. 
and it has become very important out here to the not only the veterans but the local community and community leaders out here in the east county and it is very important that uh, we have these type of uh, social media uh, voices and a uh, way to make contact with the community and our veterans out here. Well, very good. And so I, thanks, Smitty, for joining us. Again, Smitty is from Veterans of Oakley, and he just basically said Facebook is the way that we communicate, communicate with the, the, the community. So if you want to be a part of uh, Veterans of Oakley, be sure to look them up on Facebook. Thanks, Smitty, for calling in. We thank you for your participation as well tonight and look forward to hearing your voice next month. If you missed anything this episode, we'll replay throughout the week on CCTV and also archived on our website. If you'd like to support us in continuing our monthly dialogue around veterans' issues, we will accept donations through Diablo Valley Veterans Foundation. They're a nonprofit organization. Your contributions tax deductible. We will help we will hope to keep the show on the air as long as we can, and your support is important to continuing that that uh, guarantee. Call or email us to offer uh, your support. We'll connect you with Diablo Vater Valley Veterans Foundation. Thank you again to our viewers and all those who called and wrote in tonight. And thank you to Enrique and Maurice for joining us. This is Veterans Voices of Contra Costa wishing you all a good evening and thank you for serving.